Okay, hi there. This presentation is uh, aimed at summarizing what we can call rules of uh, differentiation. Now, let's see what we've seen before. Let's say we're given two functions, f of g of x and f of x, and a, num a real number, c. I think from our previous discussions, we observed that um, if we've got a function f of x plus g of x, and let's number this, let's put this as number one, and we need a derivative of that. And let's say we need a derivative of this sum with respect to x, we notice that this is same as um, differentiating f as an individual function with respect to x, then adding the derivative of g of x with respect to x, which says the derivative of a sum of functions is actually the sum of the derivatives. And on the other hand, if we've got, um, say, number two, we've got a multiple of a function by number c, the derivative of this table of function will be precisely c multiplied by the derivative of uh, function. And in this case, this sum also applies when we are dealing with subtraction. Number three, we looked at uh, what we called the chain rule. So the chain rule is essential whenever we're differentiating be it a, a sum of functions or difference of functions or a function by a constant as long as we have a function like x, h of x which is a composite function, let's say, g f of g of x. We need to remember what we announced before, that the derivative of such a function will always be the derivative of the leading function multiplied by the derivative of the argument until we differentiate the simplest argument, in this case, it will be dx of dx. So we have exemplified that. We're not going to get into that any more longer. So at this moment, we need to look at another two rules of differentiation. One is when we are we need a derivative of a product of two function f of x by g of x. And uh, lastly, we're going to look at um, derivative with respect to x of a quotient of two functions, let's say f of x over g of x. So where in this case we can put that g must be different from zero, wherever we are differentiating. Now, first of all, I would like to say that I will we'll discuss this rule number four using where we we'll derive it using the incremental quotient, but this one 
Um, we are just going to announce it and give some examples. Then we move forward because the calculation is a bit tedious and time consuming. Now, let's say then we are given such a situation for a product row. In this case, we have got um, y equals to x sine of x. And in this case, you can say our f of x is equal to x and our g of x equals to sine of x. And we shouldn't lose sight in this case that the derivative of f of x is equal to 1 and that of uh, g of x is equal to cosine as we have seen before. Now let's try to compute dy dx and the derivative of y using the incremental quotient and you need to be on the lookout whether the derivatives of these individual functions are going to be involved in this case. So let's say we have that incremental question there as x plus delta x is multiplied by sine of x plus delta x minus sine of x over delta x. Now let's move on with this calculation and see what we can arrive at. Right. Now, applying the identity which we have used, we used before, let's say write this x plus um, delta x there. Then applying that identity, you get a call sign x cosine delta x plus sign delta x cosine x in brackets minus sine x. Now removing these brackets here, calculating that limit, so yes, x delta x tends to 0, as delta x is 10 to 0 now here we're going to have x sine sine uh, x cos delta x plus delta x sine x cos delta x sorry plus x sine delta x cosine x plus delta x sine 
delta x cos x minus sine x all over delta x. Let's double check that multiplication. We multiply this term there to get that and then multiply the same term there to get that. And nextly we multiply this term that x to get this term and lastly we multiply this term by delta x to get that one. Now let's analyze this and see whether we can simplify. Now as delta x is going to zero this cosine will approach 1 which makes this term very close to be x sine x. In this case actually we've omitted something here. It should be x sine x x sine x. I realize now when I'm trying to discuss that then um, we need to have here x sine x. Now, if this cos delta x is approaching 1, it, then this is x sine x, then this difference between the two, this is not exactly 1, it's approaching 1, so the difference between this term and that term is um, insignificant, so let's say we simplify those two terms. Then we are left with this rest. The rest. Then uh, continuing this, let's cut now compute the limit here as delta x is going to zero. Now what we are left with is the following. We've got delta x sine x cos delta x plus x sine delta x cos sine x plus delta x sine delta x multiplied by cosine x all over delta x. Now, at this stage, I suggest we write, we distribute this common denominator and write this as follows. We write delta x sine x cos delta x over delta x plus this plus sine and this is the term over that denominator, common denominator and here is x sine delta x cos x over delta x plus delta x sine delta x cos sine x over delta x. And you can do that because delta x is a common denominator. Now, let's see where this takes us to. In this first case, delta x and delta x, they simplify to 1. And this last term, delta x and delta x, 
they also simplify to 1. Then we are left here with sine sin x cos x. So then this right now this as a limit as delta x is going to 0 of uh, sine x cos delta x plus x cosine x multiplied by sine delta x over delta x. As you can see at this point I'm reorganizing this term conveniently plus sine delta x cos x for this last term and they were computing a limit here. Now we've got delta x there and a delta x there and in the two cases we don't get any undefined expression because we can just plug in delta x here we can evaluate that limit that way and it's similar there but here in this term this is the situation of the special limit we discussed which when delta x is turning to zero that will turn to one so this turns to one so in the final analysis here when we plug in zero this will be equal to one and there if we plug in zero this will be zero so then what we're left with we're left with sine x plus x cosine x. Now, what we have at this moment, we need to compare with where we started and see what really has happened to arrive at this derivative. Now, let's check here. This is what we, ha we had as the function and these are the derivatives of the individual functions involved cosine and 1 and these are the functions in, uh, given in the product. Now looking at the final the result we can claim that we have a 1 there because 1 times sine is sine so we have 1 there and then we've got cosine there which means precisely what we have here we've got 1 as the derivative of f of x multiplied by sine x which is g of x plus f of x as it was given multiplied by g of x prime. Now what we see here is what you can consider to be equal to the derivative of f of x multiplied by g of x and the procedure which has been given here on how to handle this, pro this product when you differentiate is what we're going to call the product rule for differentiation. So now what is necessary now is to look at an example without which you can compute without going through the long calculation using the incremental quotient 
but just applying what was seen here. So let's say example. Let's say we're given the h of x, which is equal to x squared e to the power of cosine x. And as it is, the chain rule which we learned before, the product rule, and any other rule of differentiation will work in some situation in combined in a combined way. In other words, we cannot say we are going to find a function where we are going to isolate and only apply the chain rule or somewhere only apply the product rule. So here we are going to apply this product rule and the chain rule as well. So what we're going to do here we're going to say h prime let's call this f of x multiplied by this one, let's call it g of x. So now applying the form, the rule is given there, we need to differentiate f of x, which is going to be applying the power rule to x to the power 2 minus 1, multiplied by e cosine of x plus now we take f of x without differentiating which will be x squared multiplied by the derivative of e to the power cosine of x but now here we've got a composite function that's where we need to apply the chain rule then that will be we know that the derivative of exponential function comes back as the exponential function itself retaining its argument but multiplied by the derivative of the argument, in this case, the derivative of cosine, which is going to be minus sine of x. Then what is left is to simplify and write the whole expression nicely, which will be 2x cosine, sorry, not cosine, but uh, e, 2x, e to the power cos x plus let's say minus because of this minus here let's take this minus to lead there minus x squared multiplied by sine that is reorganizing this product multiplied by e to the power cos x and you must be careful that that does not form part of the argument of sine and that will be the the application of uh, the product tool maybe let's say one more example let's say now we're given um, k of x which is equals to 4x squared plus um, e x squared multiplied by cosine x. Now what we see here, this is what we're always going to do. When we're given a function, we need first of all to pause and check what type of function exactly we're given. First of all, this is a sum. Secondly, that sum, one term, is a product. So, in other words, now the sum rule, that the derivative of sum is sum of the derivative, is going to apply. The product rule is going to apply where the product appears. That's what we should check and see that when we start differentiating, we know exactly what is involved. So now, it is, we'll say k of x, prime, we differentiate here, we apply the power rule because that demands the power rule, then you get the 4 
brackets 2 x 2 power minus 1 and as you can see there I'm not trying to be slowly and expose all the transformation I've done as far as differentiation is concerned before I can simplify plus now when you come here we have to differentiate the first function first here which is e to the power x squared which will be the exponential function e to the power x squared multiplied by the derivative argument which is going to be 2 x 2 minus 1 then multiply it by the second function here without differentiating which is cos x plus applying that um, rule now we differentiate g which is in this case cos we take the exponential as it is we differentiate cos which will give us minus sine x and then we will be done so we've taken this as a sum plus this is a product and apply the chain rule in one problem right simplifying this we'll get here 8 x plus 2 x e to the power x squared cosine x minus e to the power of x squared sine x that will be the derivative now i think this is enough for uh, examples of applying the product rule now let's look at the quotient rule which is i said before we're going, not going to drive it but just announce it and then take do one or two examples. The question rule says for given a function h of x, which is a rational function, f numerator g denominator, and taking care that g is not equal to zero, then if we want to find the derivative of the quotient, which is h of x, we'll get this by differentiating the numerator. differentiate the numerator first that will be f of x prime multiplied by g of x minus the derivative of g of x multiplied by f of x all over g of x squared and this is very important here remember it's not the same thing to say 6 divided by 2 as to say 2 divided by 6 meaning the, the division respects the order so similar is going to happen here you must make sure that you follow the formula strictly as it is this cannot cannot swap be swapped around just as division respects the order this comes exactly in this order now let's take an example which is going to be h of x equals to x squared plus x all over cosine x squared now differentiating following this rule it will be h x prime Then differentiating f, which is the numerator here, to give us 2x plus 1 multiplied by cosine 
x squared, which is g from denominator, minus g prime, which is going to be minus cosine, minus sine, x squared, multiplied by the derivative argument, which is 2x, then multiplied by f of x, which is x squared plus x, all that over cosine squared x squared. Then simplifying, we can now write our denominator as cos squared x squared. This side, we have nothing to simplify, you can just write that as 2x plus 1 multiplied by cosine x squared. And this side, multiplying this 2, we get plus, and then removing the brackets there, we can get 2x cubed plus 2x squared in brackets multiplied by sine x squared. I think I'm going to leave that there and now ask you to do some examples on your own. And uh, the following examples we have for the product rule. Actually, not only product rule, we've got the sum there, the sum, and here product of two functions. And then what we need to add on here are few exercises on the concerning the quotient rule. Then let's say um, let's give some space for writing the some more exercises on the concerning Now in this case we've got four more exercises and all of these exercises are for practicing the quotient rule. It's cos x over square root of x plus x. At the beginning, you must do these exercises following the formula strictly or the rule strictly, but bit by bit, you must try to do the exercises without necessarily looking at the formula so that you can try to do it from your memory, remembering how the formula works. Then h of x here is sine x squared all over x plus 1 number 4 lx l of x is equal to e x plus x squared over cos x squared. And number five, I want to challenge you a bit here. Let's say we've got a function t of x which is equals to tan of x 
and I'm expecting you to up see how this is relevant in this question in this context of applying the quotient rule. And similarly, number six, let's have m of x which is equal to cot of 2x that is the argument now at that point i think we have looked at the product rule the quotient rule and they will also have summarized the what I would call maybe the algebra of uh, differentiation, which is in this case one and two. And the most important, we should never overlook any of the rules we've looked at, the power rule, the chain rule, and then now we've got the product rule given as derivative in this case of f of x with respect to x multiplied by g of x plus the derivative of g of x dx multiplied by f of x. So these two gaps which we left at the beginning, we can now complete them. And in the case of uh, quotient rule g being not equal to zero we have this as uh, I'm going to write this in short here as d f dx multiplied by g of x minus d g dx multiplied by f of x all that over g of x squared. Like I emphasized before, all these rules, all these procedures, they're going to be applied maybe in one problem in combination, not really in isolation. So whenever you get an exercise, you must really ask yourself in exercise as a whole, what are we giving? Do you have products? Do you have someone to apply the chain rule? Do you have a sum? Do you have a difference? And you make sure that as you carry out the differentiation, you carry out very carefully and make sure that you arrive at the right answer or result. Otherwise, at this stage, given these two sets of exercises, I think it's enough to practice and to consolidate what you have seen as far as the product rule, quotient rule, and the rest of the rules are applied in differentiation. Then I'd like to say there, thank you for listening and a good luck in your practice. Meet you in the next during the next discussion.